Good afternoon, students. Uh, you are welcome to Home Economics class, JS3. I am Mr. Jerry Victor. Today we'll be looking at um, fabrics and the method of identifying them. At the end of this class or this lesson, the student should be able to identify different fabrics using the correct test which may be appearances, the handle, strength, microscopic, or burning test, and including the labels on different fabrics. And secondly, every student should be able to use, the, use each fabric or mention the uses of each fabric in day-to-day -day activity. And thirdly, should be able to mention the typical fiber fabrics that you can see in the market now we say that sometimes labels or care labels on garments tells the type of fabric and how to care for it but often these labels are not available hence there is need to learn how to identify fabrics using simple scientific experiments or tests as the case may be these simple experiments and tests include one, the one we call appearance and handle, that is touching the materials and feeling them and knowing how they are in appearance. That's why we call it appearance and handle. Then the second one is microscopic appearance, that is taking the yen of the fiber to check them under a microscope. Then the third one is strength test. And in this test, we try to know the strength or how strong each of the fibers may be. Then the, the fourth one is burning test. Here we subject the fibers to burning, where we burn them and to perceive the smell that comes from each of them and lastly the one that we started from which are labels which we see most times in our conventional way that we buy in the market so we want to start from the first one which is appearance and handle now as we know if you go to market to buy clothes you will touch them before buying and most times we we'll ask, is this pure cotton? Or some people may say, are you sure it's not uh, linen? Or are you sure it's not fiber? Or it's not a nylon, as the case may be. Now, in appearance and handle, we talk of, or we say that this is not a definite test. Because, why is it not a definite test? Because a number of fabrics can have similar appearance and handle. That is to tell you that, that's why some people find it very difficult to differentiate between cotton and uh, linen as the case may be in some places so that's why we say that is not a definite test it's not definite it does not guarantee 100 percent knowledge of a fiber now how do we perform this test we said that to perform this we examine the fabrics closely and feel its texture with our fingers that is the way we touch materials in the market when we go to buy them we touch them to feel them and to know how they are when we because we said that in our fiber when we studied fiber we can remember that we said that some fibers are lustrous in touching some are scaly some are fine very fine um, fiber so this is a way of knowing the fiber now the second test is a microscopic test or appearance as the case may be now this is a test to study the structure of the fiber under the microscope now under the microscope to perform this kind of this test we say that you pull a fiber or a yen from the fabric then when you pull it the second thing you do is you mount the fiber on the slide of the microscope now when you mount it on the slide of the microscope 
Then number C, you examine the specimen under low power and also under a high power. By so doing, you'll be able to know if you'll be able to know some things that will appear on the fiber. Then lastly, you note the fibers. The fibers under the microscope, you, see, you observe some key things. The first thing you observe is some fibers appear rounded while some appear flat. So now when you see these two key things on the fiber under the microscope, you just, that will tell you the type of fiber that you have. So now we want to compare we want to compare fibers in these two um, in these two identifications. We want to compare them in tabular form, under appearance and microscopic. Now we are going to make a, a table, write down the the fibers accordingly and note the appearances and how they look like when viewed under a microscope. Now we will start from the first one, which is cotton. Now, cotton in appearance is very cool and to feel and fairly firm and it has a dull appearance. Cotton has a dull appearance. When you look at it, it's usually dull. But when you touch it, it has a firm, a fairly firm uh, feel. Then when viewed under the microscope, um, cotton fiber appears flat and resembles twisted ribbon or what we call ribbon as the case may be twisted ribbon it appears flat when viewed under the microscope then linen linen in appearance has a very cool crispy handle and it also has a dull appearance linen it's just like cotton in appearance it has though it's, it's, it's slight different from cotton it is crispy and uh, dull in appearance but when viewed under a microscope linen fiber is rounded and smooth with swellings or what we call knots and o d e s knots at intervals you know the way you used to tie rope you tie and you stretch you tie just like that knots at intervals it appears with it appears rounded with smooth and swellings at intervals then wool wool when you touch it in appearance wool is rough dull in appearance though springy and warm to touch that is wool is rough and dull in appearance but when you touch it it is spring that is, it is elastic and it is warm to touch womb, womb can elast and come back to the normal shape then when you under under a microscope wool is covered with scales you know what we call scales like the scale of fishes you know when you go to market you see fish that has scales now wool is covered with scales with overload and point toward the top of the fiber now that is how wool appear under the microscope then Silk is another um, silk is another fiber. Now silk has a smooth and lustrous appearance. It is soft and resilient to handle. It has a smooth and lustrous appearance and is soft and resilient to handle. Now, when viewed under the microscope, silk is raw. Or the raw silk, sorry, the raw silk is seen as double filament, what we call filament, double filament, and the degummed um, fiber, the, the silk that is silk that has they have removed gum from it has a smooth surface. Silk has a smooth surface. Now note that wool and silk are animal fibers they are gotten from animals remember that silk is gotten from silkworm the silkworm while wool is gotten from angora rabbits and other brand of animals now the next one is viscous rayon 
Now, viscous rayon is another fiber which is a man made fiber, as we know. It has a smooth, fairly soft handle when you touch it. It is lustrous in appearance and may resemble silk. When you touch it, it may resemble silk. Now, when viewed under the microscope, the viscous rayon um, fiber is rounded with grooves running lengthwise that looks like transparent rod transparent rods with heavy lines on it that's how it appears that's how when viscous rayon appears now another man-made fiber which is acetate fiber in when you touch it also in appearance and handle it is like silk and also has a smooth soft handle and may be dull and lustrous acetate fiber may be lord and dustrous then when viewed under the microscope the fiber is rounded with one or more surface ridges which looks like thickened lines remember the first one looks like heavy lines but this one is thickened lines now so that is that for acetate fiber now when we move over to nylon nylon also when touched is very smooth and slippery nylon is very smooth and slippery and uh, when viewed under the microscope the filament now the nylon um, fiber is known for called filament the filament looks like glass rods looks like glass rods now we we'll now move on to the last one which is polyester polyester also is another man-made fiber and when touched it also has a smooth slippery feel slightly stiffer than nylon slightly stiffer than nylon okay now the under the uh, microscopic test the filament looks like glass rods so that's the comparison of the two uh, of the two uh, different tests that is strength appearance and handle and microscopic so let's look at the other two which is strength test and burning test before we end the class now strength test is the test of both the width and the dry strength of the fibers that is both the wet when the fiber is wet and when the fiber is dry now to perform this test you draw two yarns or threads from the lengthwise grain of the fabric that is you pull out what what we learned at yarns or threads in the fiber pull them out two of them then when you draw them you wet one thoroughly in water then when you wet, wet thoroughly in water you hold the dry yarn with the first finger this is the first finger and this is the thumb the first finger and the thumb hold and pull when you pull the two of them you will note the strength now you repeat the pulling with the wet yarn when you repeat the pulling with the wet yarn you will be able to note the strength of each one and find out if the yarn is weaker or stronger when wet than when dry or are they of the same strength so now that is that for the strength test now we'll now move over to the burning test now this is another test that is a bit um you have to be very careful when you do this burning test because when you're doing this burning test you have to draw a yen or several yens yes as the case may be from the fabric then when you draw them you hold the yens on the flame of a lighted candle you know you light a candle like this and as the fire is coming up from the fire candle you put the yen there and light it and as you light you withdraw it rapidly as you put you withdraw you put you withdraw and as you are withdrawing it what are the things you will be you will observe you observe the following things one you observe the burning you observe if whether the yen bonds does the yen bond that's the first thing you, you observe then the second one is does it continue to burn out of the flame that's it burning out of the flame you know some fiber when you put them on the fire, on the fire it's ready to burn they will burn out of the flame now the 
third thing you note is if the fiber shrinks from the flame you know how you put something inside the fire and it shrinks away you note if the fiber shrinks from the flame and melts you know shrinking and melting then the lastly or the last thing you note is if the fiber melts and burns at the same time some fiber can melt and still burn at the same time then there's also another thing you note you smell the fumes you know what you mean by fumes they are perfumed what we call perfume you smell the fumes if it is like burning paper if it's like hair or if it smells like vinegar or it smells like burnt meat you know how meat it smells when you burn them burnt meat or boiling celery boiling celery now when you observe these things then the last thing you will note also is you observe the ash if it is light and powder or it is like bead bead you know what to bead now what is bead that women used to use in making necklace and you check if it's like that then so when you finish that you now have to take your uh, take down what you know what you observe down now so let's compare these two the strength and the burning test as we do like as we did earlier in the first one all the fibers we write them out in a tabular form and let's note them now fibers like cousin under the strength test they are very strong when dry than when wet Cutting fiber is very strong when dried and when wet. Then under the burning test, it burns in and out of flame. Cutting burns in and out of the flame, and it leaves gray, white powder or powdery ash, and it smells like burning paper. You know how paper paper used to smell when you burn it. That's how cutting smells. Then the other one is linen. When you you test linen under the strength test, linen is stronger than cotton, and stronger when wet than when dry. Yes, linen when wet is stronger than when dry. Then under the burning test, it is similar to cotton. Linen is similar to cotton. Then wool wool is another fiber. Now wool is stronger when dry than when wet wool is stronger when dry than when wet and uh, when you subject it to burning under the burning test it does not burn but it smolders like it folds you know something that is not really shrinking but it folds together and smells like burning hair you know burning hair or feather burning hair or feather you know have you tried burning your hair before uh, you smell like uh, roasted goods <laughs> that's how that's how we used to smell when you burn it then i also leaves beads of ashes bead beads of ashes beads then silk silk is stronger when dry than when wet and it's also similar to wool similar to wool in under burning test that is it smells like bunny hair or feather or uh, as the case may be then the and uh, viscous rayon now viscous rayon is stronger when dry than when wet under the strength test and it is similar to cotton in burning similar to cotton just not the characteristics of cotton that's how viscous rayon is so you see that's why we said earlier that um uh, a appearance and handle is not a definite because when you touch viscous rayon it looks like cotton so that is that then the next one is um, acetate fiber acetate fiber is stronger when dry than when wet and when you burn it it burns like cotton but it smells like vinegar or acetic acid remember when we said when we studied the fibers we said that Acetate fiber is is the when is cutting when cutting linters is treated with acetic acetic acid or acetic anhydride. I hope we still remember our note now. Now 
it smells like vinegar or acetic acid and fumes like boiling celery for those of us that were in the class i gave us and i showed us example of what celery is celery is one of the fruit type or vegetables you can buy in the market so go and do the, the assignment yourself find out more on how celery smells when you boil it then nylon nylon is or the nylon loses strength when wet that is it is stronger when dry than when wet and also when you burn it it shrinks from the flame it melts into hard white gray beads and it, it also fumes like boiling celery it also fumes like what boiling celery okay so now the last one is polyester now polyesters when under the strength test loses strength when wet it loses strength when wet and when dry or under the boiling under the burning test it shrinks from flames and it melts given a sweet aromatic smell with a round hard black bead it forms black beads when you burn polyester they form black beads now i believe that we have been able to note the various methods of fiber identification remember the first one we mentioned was labels now labels can be seen in virtually or most clothes that we buy in the market now that's why sometimes when you buy some clothes in the market you see 100 percent cotton some you see 70 percent polyester or some you see 50 percent nylon or some you see 100 percent linen so you when you buy clothes most of the market you note those um, labels and that's also another way of identifying five fabrics or fibers as the case may be okay so now before we round up for today i want to look at some few uses of fabrics and and we'll close for today now different fabrics are used for different purposes as we all know remember when you come to school you will wear different materials to school you know somewhere cotton somewhere linen somewhere wool somewhere acetic as fiber some even wear nylon as the case may be and somewhere polyester now i want to look at some few uh, uses of uh, fiber we'll stop we'll stop, just mention two and we'll close we'll continue in the next class now the first one is cutting i want to know what cutting is used for now cutting is one of the most useful fiber used for many purposes like nigeria is a made is a good producer of cotton as, as like we saw in our lesson egypt also produces cotton now we we'll see that most of the clothes we wear in nigeria are made of cotton because it is more or less a tropical fiber now they are used for outer personal clothes like your um, school uniforms your at the clothes you wear at home to go to churches and functions now personal clothing those are personal clothing then underwear furnishings like bed furnishings or, or uh, other furnishings at home then also bed sheets pillowcases tablecloths etc now we have typical cotton fabrics that material that once when you buy them you know that they are typical cotton fabrics now one of them is chiffon you go to the market you see people selling materials you tell them you need one chiffon chiffon is a typical cotton fabric then the other one is calico calico is also a typical cotton fabric then we have what we call poplin poplin is also like um it's also a typical cotton fabric you see it in the market also we have satin satin is also a typical uh, cotton fabric Next one is brocade. No, all the brocade, not this one that all those uh, our side people used to wear. It is called it, call it brocade. Most of them are 100% cotton. Then the next one is the one there's a material we call cordro. Cordro is spelled C O R D U R O Y. Cordro is also a typical cotton fabric. Then there's another one we call velvetine. Velvetine is also a cotton fabric and we have organdi 
and last but not the least we have one we call flannelette flannelette is also a typical cotton fabric now before we close let's look at the uses of linen and we round up now you uh, linen is used to produce house what we call household linen mostly kitchen linen table linen bathroom linen and uh, other household linen now we have typical linen fabrics that once you buy them you know that they are typical linen fabric there's one we call damask damask is a typical uh, linen fabric damask we have one we call hawker bag hawker bag is also uh, a typical uh, a typical uh, a typical linen fabric we also have canvas we have canvas we have twill we have the one we call lawn now these are typical linen fabrics so i think we'll stop here for today when in our next class we will continue from the other remaining um fabrics or the fibers note their typical fabrics and we'll finish on fiber then we'll now move over to laundry and laundry processes before we move over to fab uh, fabric finishes okay so we'll stop here for today now we have an assignment that everyone will do you will visit a nearby tailor or a seamstress okay, provided the one that is closer to you you pick fabric materials and when you pick them you get a 22 L, um, or 20 leaves yes as the case may be or even if it's 40 leaves is possible then when you pick all these um, materials you do these tests that we mentioned above strength test do appearance then you do also burning test when you do them you write them down now what you do is when you get a material place it on the book each page use gum or tape as case may be tape it then write the name of the material I write the name of the material the test that you performed and what you discovered then you gather them all together until you are able to do for all the eight types of fabrics so we'll see i'll be expecting to see your uh, your assignment